This time what we are going to do is use a fork system call to spawn a full tree of process. So once again, the best way to explain what we are going to do is to look at the diagram here and the trace of execution. Uh, as the diagram shows, you are going to this time generate from your parent process, let's say one, two, three generation of processes if the value given to you by the user was three. However, you are going to combine both generating n direct children with generating n generation of child process. Um, more specifically, if the value given to your parent process is n equal 3, you generate 3 child process. Each of those, however, is going to generate only 2 child processes. So every time you go down one generation, you decrease pretty much the value of uppercase n. In turn, the children of the third generation will have, sorry, the children of, well, let's call this generation 0, 1, 2, children of generation 2 right here are going to generate only one child each. And this child will generate only zero child. So that means that it has not, it has nothing to do, it doesn't need to call fork, it's just going to terminate. And we're going to make sure, of course, that each level has process waiting for the child process they generated. So the trace we're going to do, we're going to get out of this uh, program is going to look something like that. Uh, generation number, tabulation, child number inside the generation, tabulation, PID, just to make sure, and then a message. The message will be, well, I have nothing to do for those children of the last generation, or I spawned a direct child, which is the first out of one uh, and this is its PID, or I spawned a direct child which is the first out of three, that would be a, a generation one process, and this is a PID. And pretty much the only way for you to make sure that your program works is to take this trace, which is going to be relatively big for even three, uh, a value of n equal to three, and plot on a piece of paper, draw on a piece of, piece of paper, the detail with every generation, every process as an empty box, Okay, something looking like that. And for each box, you are going to write down the PID of the process that has been created and check out that line out of your trace as being correct. This is the output I expected. I got everything I needed from that process. Uh, one way I suggest you work on that is by taking the trace that you get, cut and pasting it into a Word document, for example, and reordering it by hand so that you can see that all the process of generation zero are here child zero, generation zero, that's the parent process, you see everything that has been done. Then for generation one, child one, two, and three are going to be here. You see what has been done. You can check that they did everything you expected and so on and so forth. So I will leave that kind of debugging to you. Okay, I will show you how to develop the code, uh, but make sure that you do not simply compile, you know, and jump to the conclusion that it's working. You'll have actually to assess that your code is working just like I did here with uh, this trace of my example. So let's go to the code. I have already some boilerplate code that I suggest you use as a starter. Uh, I have a little function which I call who am I. This displays the generation number, the child number, and the PID on the screen. I do not go to the next line, okay, so that I can then put a printf after calling who am I and the message I'm displaying is going to go just on the remainder of the line. So this is going to be a little utility function that I'm going to use. Uh, the main is going to be trivial. Give me a value for n, read the value for n, call the recursive function generation with parameter 0, 0, and n. The first parameter is the child number inside the generation. The second is the generation. The third is the value n that was given by the user, which is pretty much how many child process you need to generate. I really recommend that you tackle this problem recursively. Uh, the iterative version will be unnecessarily confusing. So at last, at least the recursive one is really adapted to that kind of stuff. So with this border code out of the way, we need to focus on our recursive function. What do we need to do? Well, this is going to be somewhat similar to what we did so far, okay? If n equal equal zero, what does this mean? That means that every time I call myself recursively, I'm going to choose to increment the number of the generation and decrement the number of n. n will therefore represent the number of children I need to produce. When I reach n equals zero, that means I am one of those bottom process. I don't have any child to generate. 
I'm going to call who am I to display information about my generation, my child number in that generation. And once who am I is done, I'm going to call printf to display on the same line. Nothing to do. Suspension mark, backslash n to go to the next line, and I'm done. I'm going to sleep once again to paste things up, and I'm going to exit with one well, success return code. And that's it for the small process that are going to complete our tree. Okay, terminate to uh, how to say end our tree. Now, what other situation can occur? Well, the general situation is I am in one of the middle generation. I am a child lost in the tree of process, and my role is to produce n sub processes. So I'm going to reuse the pattern that we used so far, okay, which is, well, give me a value of n and I will generate n sub processes, child processes. I do that with, whoops, if I can find the curly brace, that's better. I do that here with a simple loop, a for loop, counter control loop, and I'm going to call the fork system call at each iteration. As is usual, I check the return value of the fork system call. If f is actually lesser than zero, there was a problem. So handling of the handling of the error is going to be rudimentary. P error error like we did before. Problem forking. And I'm going to exit with an exit failure exit code. And there we go. And then it goes on as we did for our previous exercise. If elf equal to zero, then I am executing the code for the child generation. This is where I'm making my recursive system call. Okay, generation is called to represent the work that is going to be done by this child process. This child process will be, will be child number i, generation gen plus one, and this child will have to generate one less child processes of its own. And I'll make sure that generation exits at the end, so that I don't have to put another exit here. But I could just to, you know, make sure and take like extra precaution. If f is greater than zero, we are talking about the parent. The parent is going to display on the screen its information. Gen, child. The PID will be generated by this function. And then the parent is going to do a printf on the same line of a spawned a direct child. This is a child number something of something. Its PID is and the value of the child PID. Go to the next line. So I need to say, what is the number of the child? Well, number of the iteration. What is the maximum children I need to generate n? What is the PID of the child? I find this in the variable f. Then I'm going to sleep for once again to paste execution. And I'm pretty much done with the parent code at that level. Let's review here. I have this loop here. The children process are going to ex execute the code in a recursive call to generation. The parent is going to execute this code, then go at the end of the if, go at the end of the loop, go back and loop again to generate the next child. And ultimately I'm going to get out of this loop as the parent. What do I need to do as a parent out of the loop? Well, same thing we did in previous exercises, that is, wait for all the child processes that I generated. How do I do this? int return value, call wait with the address of this int variable to avoid generating zombie processes. Who am I to just display? Yes, okay, I thought I got it wrong. Who am I? Yes, I got it wrong. <laughs> okay, little bit of dyslexia here. Uh, who am I with the number of the generation? and the number of the child, which is going to be the parameter that was given to me. Okay, I am child, child of generation gen. So this is what I display on the screen. Then a little printf that's going to announce, hey, child number, 
person D of person D just terminated. And once again, that doesn't mean that the child number one terminated or two or three. That mean one out of three children already terminated, then two out of three terminated, then three out of three terminated. And I am pretty much done. I'm going to keep doing that for as many times as I had children. And this is going to vary from generation to generation. Okay, this, that's a little bit of code, so let's minimize this. Go to actually conqueror. Make sure we compile it and let's test it. Hit it out. We are going to start with a very simple example one generation. Okay, let's see how it is working for one generation. Well, generation zero is here. I spawned a direct child, one out of one, PID 1022. Here we go. This is our child. This child has nothing to do. There was only one generation requested. And so it terminates. And generation zero tells us, the parent, hey, my child number one of one just terminated. Looks okay. Let's try for two. A little bit more involved. Okay. Difficulty, first difficulty, finding where it starts. Generation zero is where it starts. PID 1023. I spawned a direct child, number one of two. Generation 0 here spawns a second child. The children are 1024, 1026. 1025 here I ignore for now. 1024 has spawned a child, only one. Its PID is 1025. 1025, nothing to do. So far so good. What about 1026? 1026 is here. Spawned one child out of one. PID 1027. Here is 1027 telling us I have nothing to do. And then Hey, my child one out of two just terminated. Who is talking? 1023. 1023 is generation zero, the parent. So one of the two children terminated here. 1023 tell us later the second terminated. 1026 tell us a child number one of one terminated. 1026 is actually as as generated is a child here and is actually generation 1. You can see it here. I just spawned 1026 here from generation 0, so it's generation 1. And same thing here, a message from 1024. 1024 was spawned from generation 0, it's therefore generation 1. If you took note as we were progressing through this trace, you know that everything is complete. A dot out, n equal 3. I'll let you tackle that trace bit by bit. It's going to be a little bit more involved, but the logic is the same. And this is the only way, actually, that you're going to make sure that this program is working. It's by taking the trace of a non-trivial example, like n equal 3, and making sure that your full graph has been generated, and the parent-child process relation are as they ought to be expected.